Blog Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio's Vacation Station Travel Show with your hosts Nancy Reed and Lisa Smith. We're the mother-daughter publishing team of the digital interactive Big Blend Radio and TV magazine and also Parks and Travel magazine. And together we travel full-time on the Love Your Parks Tour, our quest to visit and cover all of America's parks and public lands and communities. You can see it all, just go to bigblendmagazine.com Today's show, we are streaming live from the beautiful and historic uh, Nacogdoches, Texas. Now, I know a lot of you know we were just in Natchitoches, Louisiana, um, but we are now in Nacogdoches, and they do share a history, Natchitoches, Louisiana being the oldest settlement of Louisiana, Nacogdoches, Texas being the oldest settlement of Texas. And uh, we arrived here today just in time to have lunch with Joanna Temple uh, from the Nagadoches CVB, the Convention and Visitor Bureau, and also checked into this beautiful and historic uh, Fredonia, the Fredonia Hotel. And we're very excited to have Ryan Russell join us. He's the Assistant General Manager here, and also a long time, and, and lived, he's, he was raised here, so he's going to know a lot about the region. Uh, so, Ryan, welcome. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Thank you for having me. And thank you for having us here. Um, We promise to behave, Ryan. Um, (laughs) You know, (laughs) you you never know. Uh, Joanna, we promise to behave too. It's really good to meet you today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm, I'm not really against not behaving, so it's cool. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. Uh Uh-oh. So I want to give everybody the website, visit and um, I'm going to spell this just to prove that I know how to spell. It's N-A-C-O-G-D-O-C-H-E-S, Nagadoches. So it's like Nagadoches, right? Um, and then you also go to dfredonia.com. Ryan, did I do good? <laughs> you did it. You did great. Awesome, awesome. An honorary <laughs> citizen, just because you can spell it. I, yeah, <laughs> you know, and I don't want to confuse people because we were just in Nacogdoches having to explain that, and now we're in Nacogdoches. Um, so the history really does tie back, um, as far as I know, back to uh, the Caddo in, Indians, right, um, in regards to Nacogdoches and Nacogdoches in Louisiana getting their name. Um, it's like one brother went this way and one brother went that way. Is that right, Ryan? Oh. Correct. So the legend goes that Chief Caddo had two sons, one Nacogdoches and one Nacogdoches. And um, when it came time for them to go start their own tribes, he told one son, Nacogdoches, to walk east. And one said they were about on the uh, Sabine River, Louisiana border. Um, and he told Nacogdoches to walk east and Nacogdoches to walk west for, I believe it's two days, might have been three days, I forget, I'm sorry, um, three days. to the setting sun and stop there and uh, make your settlement and um wow. that, lucky enough Nacogdoches stopped right here and uh here we are today 300 wow. some odd years later 300 some odd years later that's pretty amazing that's cool. so Joanna you're saying you know telling us that it, this is the oldest settlement in Texas which Nacogdoches Louisiana is the oldest settlement everyone thinks it's New Orleans I'm sure a lot of people always think Austin or, you know, San Antonio or Houston might be the oldest. But, um, Joanna, that's part of the draw to the town is the history, right? Oh, yeah. It's it's definitely probably our biggest draw. There are tons of folks that come here uh, to check out uh, why we're considered the oldest town. There's tons of historical markers. There's lots of research here. We've got the SFA University that's done a great job in helping us uh, house that information. We've got the Stone Fort Museum, which was the original uh, two-story structure built by the Spaniard E. Barbo, who uh, was our first Spaniard who, you know, made it a town. And then afterwards, that building was also used by Stephen F. Austin, who led the public, uh, the Republic of Texas against the Santa Ana. 
Oh, wow. So you're yeah. so deep. And, and Ryan, so your family, before we went on air, your family, you were telling us that your family, uh, it goes back to the 1800s here. Yes, yes. I am a ninth generation Nacogdochean um, or a ninth wow. generation BIM, as people might refer to it, born in NAC. Um, and so I'm very proud of that fact and love my Nacogdoches history and um, you know, especially love getting to work downtown where the Fredonia is located and really where the bulk of that history happened. So it kind of feels like I'm walking in my ancestry every day and um, wow. it's a lot of fun. And, and you know, cool. what I think is very interesting that you're in the hotel hospitality world and you get to invite people into your community every day and, and talk with them and share that. Um, and the Fredonia Hotel um, number one, can I just say it's really beautiful. The rooms are, they're elegant, they're luxurious. And at the same time, you, you know, sometimes you get luxury and then you feel like you can't, you know, relax. You, you know what I mean? That luxury side, it's like so luxury. You can't put your drink down on the table. You know what I mean? But here, here it's very, it's luxurious, but relaxed. I'm outside our window right now. It's at our door. We have a nice seating area outside. And thank you for that. We are big fans of being able to sit outside with your wine time. Um, but you've got this beautiful pool area with a big screen for watching movies. And um, people are out playing in the pool and having a good time. So it's relaxed, but yet very elegant and luxurious. And I think that's a really good combination. It makes us all feel very welcome. Well, thank you. Um, you know, we have to give all of the credit to our owners of the property, uh, Barbara and Richard DeWitt, who were meticulously involved in every step of the renovation. I mean, they felt every fabric, touched every chair, looked at every wall mm. covering, um, flooring, anything and everything, they had a hand in it. And so they're really responsible for, um, we don't really call it renovating, but restoring, you know, bringing this back to its mm -hmm. original glory um, and responsible for the look and the feel and everything. So we're um, super indebted to their um, investment and um, wanting to mm. refurbish the Fredonia. You know, in, in the Fredonia, let's talk about this name because um, what I've read, it's, it, it ties back to the Fredonia Rebellion. So what went down, Ryan? <laughs> That's down correct. Here? So the Fredonia Rebellion was led by empresario Hayden Edwards, who, um, long story short, was just kind of sick of the way uh, Mexico was running things and so decided to lead his own rebellion. And for uh, just a second, not, not very long at all, um, you know, we were the Republic of Fredonia. Nacogdoches tried to be its own sovereign country. Um, for just a moment, did not last long, did not go well, um, but nevertheless, wow. the name stuck. And Fredonia um, translates to the word freedom. And so, you know, that was kind of the, mm. the meaning behind that name, to be free. And um, it stuck. You'll see it. You know, if you're driving around town, you'll see it on uh, different signs and different names and streets. But, you know, I think for sure the thing that the name has become most synonymous with is our property. Ah, oh, wow. And, and go ahead, Nancy. I was just going to say, you have to think not of like how we are today but way 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 back when when there wasn't that many people and it wasn't probably that outrageous an idea to say we want our own thing so we want to do it our way I mean it sounds outrageous Correct. today you know but yes. back then it probably sounded like a pioneer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if we did it today, Joanna and I might just declare ourselves king and queen, and yep, it would not go well. Go. Um, but, you know. <laughs> we just head to the rooftop. So I think oh. they gave it a better shot oh. than we did. Hey, listen, if you're going to do that, can we still have right. happy hour in downstairs? <laughs> and can we still have, you know, the brewery and the winery downtown? I'm oh, just that saying. Yeah, can we, could, that, you know, those are open all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so could we be in your court? Like, we could be part of your court, Lisa and I. We could just be part of the government. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. It'd be the easiest job you've ever had. Uh, probably yeah, won't that's right. Long, but... <laughs> that's funny. But it'll that's look good funny. on the resume. It is funny. I, you, see, it's all about that. Now, the Fredonia <laughs> Hotel, I wanted to touch on this because how the hotel even got started was kind of like a community hotel, if you will. That's a, an interesting title for it. But, um, Kind of it is. No, that's uh, 
that's the correct title. It's a community built, community funded hotel. Um, so our property was uh, first opened in 1955, um, and really it was because of the citizens of Nacogdoches. Um, they realized mm. that travelers needed a place to stay, that they needed to open up the town to uh, visitors. They wanted people to come in and you know have this world class hotel for people to stay at. Um, so it was um, a project taken upon by several different businessmen uh, in the town. They got community members to invest anywhere from five dollars to, you know, ten thousand dollars and beyond. Hmm. Um, banks invested and they made it happen. And for um, quite a while during the late fifties, early sixties, it was the most successful community-built hotel in the country, and was even used as a model for other community-built hotels. Wow, so that That's really cool. shows about talk about a story of tourism, and and needing that because wasn't that about like this need for hotels and. Um, a need for it because people were coming here and it, that's got to go back to even being the oldest settlement, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, if you look uh, right when you enter our building, our cornerstone, quite literally mm-hmm. our cornerstone says for the convenience of travelers and guests to the city. Um, so mm-hmm. Nacogdoches is a hosp- hospitable city, you know, for 300 plus years now we've, we've welcomed people and, you know, really starting in the fifties, we wanted people to come to our town see it, see what it's all about, and really show off, but make you feel at home. It, it is a beautiful town. I mean, we just got here, and it's charming. I mean, when I say charming downtown, I seriously mean it. Those buildings, the architecture, uh, you've got all these antique stores, and with flowers outside, you know, there's everyone, it, it, there's definitely pride in the community with the sculptures, and good food so far, you know, um, we haven't explored as much as, you know, we just got here, but um, immediate, just immediate love for the, the town for sure. Nancy, you were going to say something there? No, I'm just, you know, I keep looking out and I see all these flowers here. I'm looking out our room and I'm, and I'm overlooking the pool area where people are having a great time. And then I, I think back to our walk through town. And everybody seems to be really well manicured and really cares about how they look, which is very welcoming when you come into a town. It it just speaks that people who live here care about here. Mm -hmm. I think they do. And Joanna can probably touch on this some more. You know, we're also called the garden capital of Texas. Um, So we love love the outdoors. We love the gardens. And we really um, care a lot about it. And I will give a shout out to our um, downtown um, gardener, Christy Wright. She is a city yeah. employee, but during the summer she spends almost all of her days making sure those plants on the sidewalks and downtown really? are watered and fed and does a fantastic job. So even our, our city, you know, fully supports that garden capital aspect also. So you have a, a garden lady that goes in there and takes care of the babies, or the plants. You we know, do. We're plant people, so we, we get into that. No, and, she's doing a really good job. And, and I just want to say, you know, Nancy and I travel full time on our Love Your Parks tour, and everybody be glad about it because when we weren't, and you know, we, you know, when we go through towns like yours, we play nip and tuck, and we'd like, ooh, look at that plant. Let's just take a little snippy, <laughs> snippy as we walk on by. So just know we're not doing that anymore because we don't have a home to go to and do that to, but you know, plant them. But um, it's it is really beautiful, and, and also Joanna, those sculptures. And it seems mm. like the sculptures are all part of the history of Nacogdoches. doches. Uh, and they are. And let me tell you, there's a, and there's a there are a ton of nonprofit uh, organizations here that really take pride in our history. This one specifically is the mm. Friends of Historic Nacogdoches. And Ryan may know before I came on, but this statue trail was a labor of love, and they continue to add to it. Right now we have over 10 statues, and the latest one is going to be right across from where you guys are staying at the Fredonia uh, on their property. Ryan, is there a name for that? Do you know the name of the? Um, I've been told it's going to be called the Storytellers. Um, right. Kind of features mm-hmm. different people that had a love for Nacogdoches, and you know we're just uh, great at telling the story of Nacogdoches. Mm-hmm. Right, and wow. it's also going to be like a photo opportunity. You'll be able to sit in it yes. amongst these three individuals. Um, oh, and the cool. storytelling aspect, yeah, is is huge even to our marketing efforts moving forward. Because mm-hmm. not only the his, historic stories, but individuals of which this statue is really representative of, 
uh, people that we've lost even recently um, mm-hmm. and and the love of what they've, you know, brought to Nacogdoches. And to me, and Ryan, you can tell me, I feel like have brought Nacogdoches into the 21st century. Um, but it was Absolutely. all based on story. Yeah, all based on stories, you know, some a little stretched and, uh, you know, you have <laughs> oh, to question. On, those are fun. But, yeah, we but like the those. ones... <laughs> But the the videos that are put together about, you know, where we've come from and where we've had it and really the intention of the community as a whole, uh, it, it's just it gives you that warm fuzzy. It really does. The city, the, the chamber, us as an entity, the tourism office, you know, the hotel. I mean, it's just truly a labor of love because everyone wants to see this town thrive and show it off. Mm. I just, and these statues... Yeah, and these statues are large uh, enough that they'll catch the attention. <laughs> I mean, they went oh. big with these statues. They're amazing. They're beautiful. Yeah, Absolutely they are. Absolutely beautiful. So who who is the artist? Is it different artists or one artist did them all? Um, I'm not positive on that, but I want to mm. say in looking at them, I think several of them were commissioned by the same uh, artist, mm-hmm. and the only reason may, maybe why they changed was uh, time, you know, mm-hmm. the time that mm-hmm. went by, um, right. it, but I I don't want to confirm or not say, but it, no, they're okay. very similar in the sense that if you look at them, you can see a common thread. Mm. Right, right, exactly. So that it keeps that nice flow throughout the, the, the downtown. I'm talking about sculptures, too. Um, and of course, with the history of it, but you also have an art gallery, right? That's kind of like a nonprofit co-op-y kind of it, it, gallery that we're going to go to. The the Cole Arts Gallery is it's actually affiliated with the SFA University, Stephen F. Austin University, but they do uh, have their own staff, and the folks that are running it are just cream of the crop. I don't think we could have a better. Uh, curator over there right now, and who Absolutely. also, and who works with him. He's 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 just a visionary. Mm-hmm. I want to say he comes from California. Ryan, does that make sound right? California. I, I'm I'm not sure, but um, we do have a fantastic art scene in Nacogdoches, yes. and um, the Cole Art Center does a lot to um, for phenomenal. Program, you know, make that a little more known. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. we've got cool. a. We also have, uh, we've got a new, one of our newer uh, events this year will be the Art Fest. Uh, and really, as far as photography, artists, you know, musicians, I mean, mm. rich, rich right here, including Mr. Mm. Ryan himself. He is a phenomenal photographer. Oh, Ryan. Oh. Tell us about that. Well, thank you. Where's, where, okay. <laughs> You know, because everybody, you know, wants photo ops. You know, they, as they come through town, you know, they want to go do Instagram photos and everything. And what can we show off where we are? And I look, you know, Nacogdoches, the downtown, I'm like, number one, the drive-in. Um, and I want to tell people, you know, how we found out about Nacogdoches, Texas, was from our good friend Arlene Gould over mm-hmm. in uh, Natchitoches, Louisiana. We've been there five years ago and then also in um, Toledo Bend area. And this is all part of the El Camino Real yep. de los Tejas National Historic Trail. And if you go, Natchitoches is the final destination. And you can go from Natchitoches to Nacogdoches, go through Toledo Bend area where Linda Curtis Sparks. She also said, you got to go to Nacogdoches. And finally we got here. And you guys are the first Texas town for us to cover on our Love Your Park store and in our magazine. I'm very excited, Nancy both. And we're both like, yay, we finally get to cover Texas. And um, it's, it's interesting because you've got this, this amazing trail, but you have this event every year, uh, Sail on the Trail, I think is what it's called, um, where you have a big swap meet, basically, or people have flea markets and bring things out to sell, uh, sell things all the way down uh, to Nac- Natchitoches, Louisiana, but uh, you've got the El Camino Real, but coming here, you've got this history, this art, uh, photography, the way in, you just want to pull over everywhere, and I don't know where you, you know, there's like, there's like, how many markers on the way here, Nancy, historic markers on the way from Natchitoches, if you think oh, about it. There, there are so many. And, I, and, and then when you hit Texas, it's like every 
mile you could pull over for a historic marker, it feels like, you know, the stuff went down here. <laughs> I think it's going to be, yeah. be my new hobby, pull over I at know. everyone. <laughs> and then I'm going to have to research. I'm sure there's going to be a website somewhere that has all of them listed. I, so that I will now not miss any historic marker in any place that we go. I, it's insane. I, well, you could spend days get. and days just looking at them in Nacogdoches. You yeah, see, uh, that's what exactly. I'm thinking. A, a friend of ours from Texas, Sandra, uh, she also, she's a park a national park patch lady, everybody. You should check her up on Facebook. Um, she has a bumper sticker called I Pull Over for Brown Signs, and I think we need to get it for our car uh, because we do that. <laughs> coming in but the the scenery here is absolutely beautiful these green pastures trees forest this yeah. forest mm. scenic byway coming in so you've got all these photographic opportunities the downtown um the photography downtown if you love architecture and history and the flowers and the sculptures the photography opportunities are huge especially for instagrammers so ryan what would you suggest for folks coming in here any special hot spots to go to get a really good photo well i'm gonna just give a shameless plug the fredonia hotel has tons of great spots for yes. instagram uh you know uh, right across the street from our hotel there's a it's an old continental Trailways bus station has this really great multicolored tile mosaic um that you know, every sorority girl in Nacogdoches goes and takes their photo in front of, um, you know, but then the whole downtown, hmm. I mean, is just a fantastic photo op. And I'm, I'm really not exaggerating when I say that every corner you turn, there's a great old building or brick street mm -hmm. or flowers or just something, you know, anywhere and everywhere. And then of course, um, the SFA campus, like I said, you know, we are the garden capital of Texas and that is a huge part. Um, and thanks to, Stephen F. Austin State University, who has just an absolutely beautiful campus, and Azalea Gardens, the largest Azalea Garden in Texas, I believe, um, it is. with just these fantastic trails, um, just incredible. So tons of great spots everywhere you look. Oh, wow. Wow. And also when you talk about the hotel being um, photogenic, it is, really. And it's kind of, would you say Art Deco? I mean, because of the time it was, created like there's a hotel in silver city new mexico that they're they've i think they're now probably done remodeling it's been a huge issue yeah, not an issue but a huge project taking this and it was um and refurbishing it was done in like i would say the 30s 40s maybe 50s but it kind of has yeah, that more, style yeah it's more mid-century modern that late mm -hmm. 50s yeah. early 60s um, just the time period when it was open. And again, our owners, Richard and Barbara DeWitt, um, were meticulous, you know, calling people who um, uh, who were around them in the 50s and 60s and asking their memories of what did this look like and what did that look like and looking at photos from when the hotel first mm. opened to make the design as true to the original as possible. Mm. Now, what what about well, this wall outside the pool? Nancy and I, are, when we first saw photos of the hotel, With the plant, and then yeah, it looks like you have a wall of vine. Is that like a real vine? Um, so out at our terrace pool area, that they're they're not real vines. Um, I think that oh. was the goal uh, at one point, but then realized okay, that's got to take years mm -hmm. and years. So it is a yeah. it's a very nice uh, faux boxwood, but it looks fantastic. Um, that yeah, area yeah, that you're referring to, like I said, it's called the uh, terrace pool area. And uh, when the owners purchased the hotel, you know, they said they weren't going to do it unless they could turn that area into something uh, great. You know, before the mm -hmm. remodel, that had there was a parking lot back there. There was no pool there. Um, oh, that wow. was added. Oh. Um, but it was a parking lot and loading dock, and it kind of become a forgotten area of the hotel. Um, it was added later in the 60s. It was not part of the original building. Um, and it just kind of become dilapidated, and nobody really wanted to stay out there. Um, but now it is our most requested, most booked rooms in the hotel. Mm -hmm. We have the pool and the fire pit and the yard games mm -hmm. and the large jumbotron where we show movies on the weekends and the balconies wow. on the room. I mean, you you don't feel like you're in a small East Texas town. You feel like you're in this cool Austin chic hotspot, you know, that you've paid hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get into. And uh, we're a lot more we're a lot cheaper than Austin. And uh I think more fun. <laughs> Take that, well, Austin. I think in, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we sat outside arguing, is it real, is it not? And then we decided it, it it's real for us. 
Because so we dig it. There you go. Mm, yeah, that's great. That is. Because, yeah, because yeah, I was like, it's you real. got the, the TV thing out there or the screen, and I'm like, that's got to be cool. You could sit there with a cocktail on your patio or go in the in the pool area and watch or just float in the pool and watch a movie. Like, seriously, how cool is that? Yeah. Like, I want to And chill. that pool is heated. So, oh, wow. So, you know, you can utilize it all year long. Um, sit out there cool. with a, a cocktail. Like you said, watch a movie. We play movies nightly on the screen, mm-hmm. old movies. So it's a lot cool. of fun. Cool. So tell us about the restaurants on the property because Nancy and I are looking at what, what we're going to eat and do. <laughs> what, what, what are we munching on? <laughs> Absolutely. So when you come to the Fredonia, uh, you will not go hungry. You know, I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to a hotel and they have a restaurant. Oh, it's a hotel restaurant. We're going to go somewhere else. Um, that is right. not the case at the Fredonia Hotel. Um, our owners are actually restaurateurs. That's where they got their start, the hotel um, side of the business is completely new for them, and they know food, and they do it really well. Um, so on oh. our property, we have three different outlets. We have the First City Cafe, which is kind of our casual dining experience. We're open breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Um, no reservations required. You can come in, get a great home-cooked everything, homemade breakfast from omelets to you know biscuits and gravy to breakfast tacos to these Mm. Great huge cinnamon rolls during brunch on weekends. Mm. Um, it's fantastic. Um, great, you know, quick lunch spot and then a nice dinner spot too. Um, and then we have the um, Nine Flags Bar, which is a favorite local bar, kind of a more upscale bar. Um, it's really cool. You know, when you walk in there, all the Edison bulbs are hanging down. It's a really great atmosphere. Um, some fantastic um, craft cocktails. You know, Nacogdoches has the um, six flags have flown over Texas, but Nacogdoches has had nine flags. So we have our nine flags <laughs> cocktails, one different cocktail for each of the flags that has flown I over like Nacogdoches. Um, cool. Yeah, you know, there was a lot of uh, research that had to go in that when we first opened, and mm-hmm. I took one for the team and, you know, participated. Like, and yeah, taste uh, testing, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was a hard job, but, you know, I had to do yeah, it. I bet. Oh, I feel your pain. Lot. Hey, I love this. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. Nine Flags and then, more flags better. Yeah, and then Nine Flags, so it opens up. Uh, you can go sit on the pool, our other pool, our cabana pool. You can sit out there, have a drink. We have live music out there on Friday nights. And, uh, you know, even in the dead of summer, we live in East Texas, and it gets hot. But just the way that the building is shaped around that pool, you kind of get a nice breeze in there, and you never feel just overwhelmingly hot. Um, mm. And then our uh, last restaurant, our last outlet, is the Republic Steakhouse, and this is our fine dining restaurant. Where it's just open Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, but it is a um, upscale, feel like you're in Houston, Dallas, Austin, big city steakhouse. Um, mm. Our chef and our owner do a fantastic job of curating and creating the menu um, that's uniquely Texas. Uh, we use um, all Texas raised beef, uh, Akiushi beef, um, which is basically like a American version of Wagyu beef. Um, it's fantastic. You know, like I said, everything is, um, that, and I say this kind of tongue in cheek, we, we, we really do painstakingly test every product that comes out of that room. Um, and it sounds all fun and games until you eat macaroni and cheese 30 different ways, four days in a row, um, just so we can find the best one. Um, but, you know, so much care and concern really goes into creating a top-notch product. Um, and it's a beautiful atmosphere in the mm-hmm. Republic Steakhouse. It's, somebody kind of once said it's like the uh, Jetsons meets Mad Men. You know, it's that hey. really cool mid-century modern vibe. Yeah, um, that's exactly like that's hanging it. Out with Frank yeah. Sin- you feel like you're hanging out with Frank Sinatra and yeah. Marilyn Monroe, yeah. you know, almost a speakeasy. So it's a fantastic atmosphere, fantastic food. Um, one of the best dining experiences I think you can have in East Texas, if not one of the top ones in Texas. And if you ever need people okay. to help you do mac and cheese I know, tasting, I wanna, I wanna I'm sign up for the mac and cheese <laughs> my favorite challenge. Thing. It's my favorite Again, it's thing. It's a hard part of the job, but somebody has to do it. I know, I know right? You know, uh, but yeah. okay, I have to bring this well, up because you, you. <laughs> you also have a convention center, so you are definitely a group site, right? So weddings, uh, meetings, Absolutely. and. Um, and and from what I've experienced, we didn't have to pay for parking, <laughs> or did I skip something? And, am I going to get in trouble? <laughs> no, we're not going to tell you. Uh, you did not have to pay for parking. You know that's one luxury we have over uh, Houston and, and Dallas. You 
you pay to sneeze there. I mean, you pay for everything. Um, and we, uh, mm-hmm. we let you park for free, our gift to you. Um, oh. But um, we do have, we have over uh, 20,000 square foot of meeting space. We attract conventions, you know, of all different sizes. We're a great destination. Joanna does a fantastic job of um, getting conventions here. Um, we're a full service hotel, so we can, you know, host their meetings, cater their food, um, cool. help them with entertainment, all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. And then we have, you know, weddings, special events, um, really Nac- the Fredonia um, is kind of the place in town to mark any sort of occasion. Um, I mean, we have okay. baby showers, wedding showers, wedding receptions. Um, we even have funerals. I mean, you know, people uh, just, they, they, they want to have their life moments and they want to live their life at the Fredonia. It just kind of draws people in that way. It makes you feel at home and makes you feel comfortable. And you're right in, in the downtown, which I love because you can walk downtown. I can walk, we can walk and see Joanna and have lunch. You know, it's really That's nice. That's right. <laughs> I, we, you know, walking people kind city of joke to me is that... important. And being able to walk <laughs> to downtown from your, where you stay because we have wine time. We're having wine right now. Now we can just go <laughs> over. We don't have to drive to go have dinner. <laughs> no, thing. that's right. We're, you know, within walking distance of some restaurants and a winery and a brewery. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot to do just right within walking distance. And, um, you know, this people kind of awesome. joke and say that uh, the Fredonia is Nacogdoches' living room. That's where everybody kind of comes to hang out and then disperses from there. So we're mm, right yep. in the middle of everything. I love that. You That's also cool. when, when we drove in um, and, and went to go and um, settle in our room, um, I noticed in the parking lot at the back um, that we are part of a historic landmark district. I know you're a National Historic Landmark, the Fredonia Hotel is, but we're in like some historic district that said, um, there was a sign for that, so that this That's is like correct. a. It's part of um, the Washington Square Historic mm-hmm. District, um, and so there's um, tons of great old homes, you know, around there that all qualify. Right across the street, we have the um, Jones House Bed and Breakfast, um, which was designed by a local architect named Dietrich Rolfs, who, you know, many of the beautiful buildings that you'll see he designed, you know, in the. Uh, 1800s. He was an integral part of building and designing Nacogdoches, um, but we're also in kind of almost the same block as the old university building, which was mm-hmm. the original home to Stephen F. Austin State University when it was Stephen F. Austin State Teachers College. Um, I mean, it even goes back. The old university building was a hospital during the Civil War. You know, it has a pretty extensive history in that area. You know, has has seen a lot of history and a lot of change over the years. Wow, wow, who knew about all this, you know? Mm-hmm. Joanna, where did people come from mostly to come out to Nacogdoches? Well, we have our, as far as Texas, um, you know, Houston's going to be our number one market, and it follows mm-hmm. very closely by Dallas and then Austin, you know, mm-hmm. as far as the bigger towns. Uh, but as far as overall, it, it kind of shifts around. We'll have, it's like anything, we'll have uh, it seems like a rash of folks come from New York or last week it seemed like everyone that walked in the door was from California uh, so mm-hmm. it's pretty eclectic on where folks come but everybody comes because it's the oldest town of Texas mm-hmm. and uh, you know and then one third of everyone that walks through the door is from another country 33% yeah. Yeah. is cool. from an Yeah, and they read up and hear the oldest town. We do have people that expect us to be riding horses. Uh, We get a lot of... We get a lot of folks that come that are looking for something that has to do with John Wayne because he mo- he said it in a movie. Uh, so <laughs> so it's amazing. We had we had a young couple come in today that was um, from uh, the Netherlands. So it's always interesting to be at the front desk downstairs because all different walks of life come in. It's amazing. You know- you know, it, it it is interesting when you get in, like Texas. I, I, everybody, some say it's the Midwest, some say it's the Southwest. I'm like, dude, it's it's the West. You know, it's it's really a big, big portion of that middle ground of what happened between the East and the West. It's it's a really interesting piece of property, and it's a big one. <laughs> yeah, it's big, it's big piece of land. Okay, but it's it's when you when you're here and you go into the downtown, I think that's what's so cool is you hear number one, learn that it's the oldest town, um, and you get here 
and the downtown has kept its inhe- integrity of the architecture and the building, so you're not disappointed. Some, so many times you can go into a historic district or a historic town, and all oh, there's a subway downtown or a McDonald's. You know, it's kind of like you lose that charm. And here, you have locally owned businesses, and I'm not saying that you don't have all those other things. I'm not knocking them either. It's just like the downtown should be like the mom and pop stores, you know what I mean? And you've got antique stores and restaurants and boutique shops and it's really cool. And it's a real thrive. It's like a real downtown. It's thriving and it's um, beautiful, the brick street. So I, I really appreciate that personally. It's just like, okay, it's true to its name. It's kept its history. People care. It means something. Well, they do. And I think it matters a lot to the city, and and it says a lot about city government. I mean, they have done a amazing job in keeping exactly what you're talking about. I mean, it is classified mm-hmm. as a historic uh, downtown. The integrity as far as the style of the buildings, uh, you know, there's certain things you can and cannot do. Pretty much, you can't do much of anything on the on the. Is it the outside, mm-hmm. Ryan? That you have to keep correct, correct. We have yes. a historic preservation committee. You know that, that pretty much anything that you want to do to the outsides of the building, you have to get approved by them. Um, and I mm-hmm. would also be remiss if we didn't mention um, a gentleman by the name of Charles Bright, who our convention center is actually. I'm sorry, our visitor center is named after. Um, mm-hmm. He was a large benefactor to Nacogdoches and to downtown, and um, you know he spent so many hours of his life. Um, making sure downtown was kept in pristine condition and was responsible for the light poles and, you know, the refurbishing of the bricks and the downtown square. He really gave so much of um, dedication uh, to downtown, and so we're very thankful right. for that. Mm. Yeah, and, and just mentioning him, that's what our our building is named after him, but he in himself was an entrepreneur. I mean, he was in so many different things, which I really admire, and I think that is also why this downtown continues to thrive. And it's mm. just entrepreneurs you know they rule and i love that i do too I, I, mm-hmm. we need to have more of that spirit i'm just saying we gotta like you know just as an entrepreneur myself nancy both of us and it's yeah. like it, it's it it that's like the backbone of america you know when we got yeah. here from south that's africa right. it was like you know 50 percent it was like 49 or 50 percent we were right there at the halfway mark of entrepreneurship and i just like come on let's keep going man let's keep going <laughs> Keep that going. You know, it's it's a good thing. You know, um, I I do want to ask you about annual events here because I know that you know that big sale that would happen on the El Camino Real in spring. I think it's in May. Um, what are some of the events that people can look at, like that would, you know, say, hey, let's go, let's go up to Nacogdoches. We haven't been there before. It's this cool historic town, but let's go and try and catch an event. Well, I I wouldn't. Um... I wouldn't say enough about our June event, which really to me is an anchor event for Nacogdoches and what I feel has become something uh, folks know about across the country, and that's the Texas Blueberry Festival. Ooh, and ooh. it is always, oh, yeah, the yeah, second Tuesday, a uh, second Tuesday, second Saturday mm-hmm. of June. It is a, uh, I think we are in our 30, we'll be hitting our 31st. Uh, oh. Festival coming up or 30th? I oh. know we're there already, um, and that is hosted by our Chamber of Commerce. It's over 200, close to 300 vendors. It is the epitome of a downtown festival. That if you were to see some of the um, shots from the drones, it is something out of a classic. Hallmark movie. It's amazing. We've had over 22,000 folks. They come in for the weekend. It's expanding even further into June. The more that we can tie into that first weekend of summer, we will do it. Um, So we've got lots of partners throughout uh, our community that like to play and and utilize the blueberry. And of course, it's the farms too that provide the blueberries or Texas. If we don't get them from near here in Nacogdoches, they're still going to be in Texas. Of course, you guys yeah. know how that is with uh, anything you grow. Um, but it's always been successful. And to me, it just continues to get better and better. Wow. Yeah, this cool. is cool. So, yeah, blueberries. Mm. Blueberry festival. Blueberry yeah. And, yeah. And, and they have a pie mm. eating contest. 
And the other cool. thing that Ryan had mentioned on being that we are the garden capital, uh, we have our azalea trail season that is, you know, March or April. Again, depending on the weather and the rains will determine the actual dates. But people will start calling about that. We'll start getting reports, bloom reports from the, the folks that know it all, which is over at the campus SFA. And then we also have a really nice fall foliage that's become very popular and that's in October uh, and some of the the shots that people have have taken are amazing so we get mm. actually as many folks that come through for our azalea will come through in October now they may venture a little bit out of Nacogdoches but this region because of the variety of different trees that have been planted again lots of credit to the garden folks over at SFA, uh, and then beyond our community. It's amazing. So the garden capital really does a good job in trying to get folks here all year round. Plus, they have an amazing uh, series of speakers that come that are folks that are in the know uh, in mm. that industry. You know, that's interesting because as we traveled in this morning, we said, you know, I bet you this looks really good in the fall, but we weren't 100% sure because – all the trees are different for us, you know what I mean? But I mm-hmm. saw this one tree as we drove in that was just like really all the leaves were red. I was like, dude, you know, <laughs> you're early. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, you know, let's, let's, you know, I know that you guys have got to have that fall color. So, Ryan, do you get your camera out in the fall? You've got to, right? <laughs> I do, absolutely. Um, like Joanna mentioned, the azalea garden, you know, it's the, the largest azalea garden in Texas, but it also has a huge collection of Japanese maple trees um, and different maple oh, trees, wow. which just turn, you know, these vibrant reds and mm. oranges and, and yellows yeah. during the fall. And um, it, it Nacogdoches really does sometimes look like it's out of a Hallmark movie, um, especially mm-hmm. during the fall. I, I, I always jokingly, you know, tell everybody we live in Mayberry um, <laughs> just because it you know, has that – it has that small town feel, and um, you do you feel like you're walking through a movie set sometimes, or mm, you wow. know a Norman Rockwell painting. Yeah, really. And and mm. okay, so Joanna, you have um, all kinds of restaurants. So would you say barbecue is a thing because we're in Texas that we need to do? It, barbecue is a thing. I think it's a pride thing. You know, folks like to think, uh, or you know, again, everything's done bigger and better in Texas. So. Barbecue definitely is. We've got, I'd say, some really good ones here. Mm-hmm. Um, again, one of them that's been acknowledged here recently in uh, one of our, you know, very successful publications, Texas Monthly, was our Brendan's Barbecue. Mm-hmm. And they were selected just, there was a traveler like you guys that was coming through and reported back and was impressed with uh, with what the, the meats uh what the guy was cooking up and it was nice also because it was a success story he's a young mm. sfa grad he's been here he stayed here he's been successful and now he's doing very well um mm. with his business mm. so that's one of them but we've also i mean i can't brag enough about the fredonia because ryan said it right these guys were rest- they knew how to cook some food, and they have mm. two very other successful restaurants here that I consider beyond successful because anything that's open after ten years double digit, you know they've got something. <laughs> and you're and, open on Monday. <laughs> yes, and that is you know my favorite is Antipastas is just because they do have a very nice uh, wine selection. Uh, the mm. food, the portions are over the top. You could probably get one meal and split it, or get it and bring it home because it's. But it's so good, and the and the staff at all the locations are fantastic. Mm. You know, they're tr- well trained, and they they're funny, and they've got good humors. I've never had a bad cool. wait person at any of the Dewitt properties. Any well, of I'm, them. I know here where where we are at the Fredonia Hotel, you know, from check in to. You know, getting luggage in, you know, everybody has been nothing but nice and polite mm-hmm. and helpful and fun. Like Friendly. you said, fun. Like really fun. Mm-hmm. Just fun people. So, because, you know, when you think about it, if you're here on a convention and maybe it's a business thing, you're like, oh, dude, not another convention. When you get there, you need to have fun. And, and it starts with staff. It starts okay. with who greets you. You could have had the worst drive in for any kind of reason. Nobody knows if you got 
stuck on a layover for two days somewhere in Chicago or whatever it is. Get a, no, no mean thing to you, Chicago. You got good blues, but you know, um, you never know where it is. You never know what what's gone on for someone to get here. They could have flat tires. You never name it, but. When you come in and the staff just like, that's it. You're, as soon as you come to the reception, they're like, you are the center of attention. We're going to take care of you right now. And then everybody's polite and nice to you as you go through the hotel. I think that's really a mark of good stuff because that's what makes, that changes whatever could have happened on your way here. And I'm just saying yeah. that as a traveler and a long distance driver, it's the staff yeah. at the desk. <laughs> it just can change everything immediately. Well, they you're did. spot well, on. They are Make... fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they well, are fantastic. They really are. Uh, thank you for all the kind words. Um, you know, we uh, go really try and go above and beyond with our training with the staff because, um, you know, we can have the, the most beautiful property and the, the nicest amenities. And if we didn't have a great staff, you know, uh, nobody's coming to stay mm-hmm. at our hotel. Uh, we, exactly. we employ about a hundred and about 150 people at the Fredonia. Wow. And um, I'd say about 75% of that staff is college students. Um, we are that a college town, awesome. Stephen F. Austin. And so um, we've really lucked out with just some fantastic college students who, you know, decided to make part of their four years in Nacogdoches working at the Fredonia Hotel. And um, a big part of that's that college awesome. employment that we have is through the hospitality department at SFA, mm-hmm. which does oh, that is so just awesome. an absolutely fantastic job of training students and getting them ready for the hospitality industry. Um, you know, and they partner with us, lots of other organizations around town, the CVB, uh, just yeah. getting students that real world hospitality experience. Um, and so we're mm. so thankful to have that um, workforce, that, that base to to pull from. Nancy, Nancy, and I love to hear this because this is good mm-hmm. tourism. Um, that this, you know, we're, we have our show pretty much every month or so on tourism excellence. And it's about how tourism is one, it, and it's sometimes underrated depending on who, what, and where. Tourism is one of the most important industries in the world, and it's flexible. It can change according to what's going on in the world. It, the tourism industry is huge, and when we can help uh, students join in that, it creates a job force, a workforce, and it helps the youth get involved and learn skills. And to hear what you guys are doing and employing, you know, students, I think that's amazing. That is, it's important. It is yeah, important. We're, we're very I mean, fortunate. Go ahead, go ahead. Joanna. No, you go first. <laughs> I was saying, we're, we're very fortunate to have such a good program. Um, I'm lucky enough to be an alumni of that program. Um, it's all headed up by Dr. Mm. Shay Runnels. She does a fantastic job of leading the charge for the hospitality program and just really getting those students, like I said, some great experience um, and kind of ready to go out into the tourism and hospitality mm-hmm. industry and kind of, you know, take charge. And she's Enjoy. recently on our board, so we're excited mm-hmm. to have Shay just this year. She's gotten onto our board, so. Oh, Yay. cool. Cool. You know, one thing I wanted to just touch on, because, of course, you know, we're the Love Your Parks tour, um, and we're talking about Steve F. Austin, um, and, you know, you've got the university, but you also have, and the gardens there, but the experimental forest. Now, I want to know what an experimental forest is, <laughs> but, like, I want to go, because apparently there's trails we need to go and check out. Um, is Ryan or Joanne, Joanna, which one, which one of you want to talk about that? Well, we do have a really nice walk hike and bike trail system and uh it's 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 includes this park you're talking about it's called a demonstration park it's Mm. not as active as it has been but it does look really good now i know you guys must have seen that when you came in yes Mm -hmm. is that correct yeah that's just a little pocket that probably did have a lot more things going on to it at some point i don't know ryan if you have any history on that on that particular part. So we do, we have the um, SFA Experimental Forest, which you might be referring oh, to. That's out okay. Highway 7. Yeah. Um, but then what Joanna is referring to, you know, in town we have the fantastic trail system and the um, experimental gardens and uh, demonstration, you know, gardens mm-hmm. and areas. Um, and what's really great is we have a trail system that connects downtown and SFA. So if you were to walk down Main Street, um, 
almost to the end of Main Street. You can get on the trail, and um, it'll take you all the way to the SFA campus. It's a couple miles and takes you through the gardens and you know, through the Arboretum. Um, so it's really a fantastic opportunity, you know, a fantastic bike or walk, you know, for anybody that's looking to see that part of town. Right, right. on. And there's a whole list of the things that you'll find and see along the trail. So I've got that neat little brochure here at the CVB for you to I have grab. <laughs> I know. We okay, can't good. wait. I mean, mm. we're at the beginning here, and it's so great that we can, like, hear, okay, this is what you can see and do. And, and listeners, uh, you know we're going to be following up with lots of other interviews. Uh, we've got a lot of historic sites to visit, the sculptures, the gardens. A lot of flower power. Uh, we're going to do as much as we can. We're also going to, we're staying here at the Fredonia, which is amazing. We're also going to be staying at a couple of bed and breakfasts, so you also hear those stories. One, both historic. Uh, one apparently haunted. One known for breakfast. I, you know, it's going to be interesting. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that. And so, close your ears, Ryan, uh, on this part. But I want, I want, I want Joanna to tell everybody that this is also not only you have the Fredonia, which is like this amazing destination downtown, uh, lots of rooms. And, uh, but you also have a, a number, from what I see, a lot of bed and breakfast and Airbnbs that are also oh. part of the lodging makeup here. That's correct. And we happen to be just one of the fastest growing areas in Texas. So that's really cool. Mm. Uh, you know, with the being in the piney woods of Texas, that means we've got lots of cool places out in the woods. Uh, there's lots of water, so we have lots of places up on by water. So if anyone's looking, whatever they desire, they're going to be able to find it here. So, yeah, mm. these uh, B&Bs are amazing. You just happen to be staying at two of our classics that you're going to just enjoy beyond. I, I think Nancy and I are feeling kind of spoiled, you know. It's, a, it's, a, it's a just saying. You know, we've got this lovely. Look at this hotel. I want. I, I wish we should just bring our listeners in here. We'll 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 be sharing photos soon, everybody, because it's really really nice here. Let me just say this: it is comfortable. It's beautiful. It's relaxed. It's luxurious. And I want to take everybody into the shower. <laughs> you want to come in the shower with us? You know, that sounds terrible, but it's true. The shower is beautiful, right, Nancy? You can't, you can't wait to take a shower either. I know. I can't wait for you. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Just kidding. But, you know, really, it's a beautiful, beautiful downtown. Uh, Everyone, we can't wait to keep you all posted with all of our adventures out here. We thank you both for joining us. Uh, Ryan and and, uh, Joanna, before you go, I want one last question. You got family members that come and just bring a visit and knock on your door and say, hey, we're coming for a weekend to Nacogdoches. And, of course, neither one of you are going to be working this weekend, which, you know, I know you're in the tourism industry, so you, you work plenty of weekends. But they're going to knock on the door and they're going to say, hey, you know, we're here for the weekend. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do? So uh, it's summer right now. So let's hear about what you're going to do on a beautiful summer weekend in Nacogdoches. So, Ryan, let's start with you. I think first off, as soon as they would knock, I would say, you're not staying at my house. You're going to go stay at the Fredonia. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I'm with you. Good move. <laughs> we travel full time yeah. for these reasons. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But then um, after that, you know, I would um, I would take them downtown. You know, we'd uh, go spend the day and maybe go get breakfast at Dolly's Diner, um, a fantastic spot downtown that serves up some great, you know, classic diner foods. Um, we'd start there. Maybe we have a fantastic farmer's market. We would walk down to that. Um, And then, you know, we mentioned earlier we have a brewery and a winery downtown. Um, Maybe, you know, go hit up each of those and then finish the night by, um, you know, after our beer and wine. Um, We have a great axe throwing place downtown. So go kind of, you know, have some fun there and really embody the lumberjack spirit. We're the SFA lumberjack. So go throw a few axes and kind of finish the day there. Throwing axes. Oh, Joanna, you told us about this. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Would All you right. Well, I would Nancy do... and I with an axe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm one of those that always like to do a little teetotaling. So, of course, I would probably uh, head directly to, if not the winery. Uh, we have this beautiful vineyard that Ryan's, I think, a family member. Y'all are related. Uh, is wow. actually looking to culture their their vineyard. They've developed and building a new pavilion. It is. In the evening, amazing. They've got a wonderful um, 
even though it's warm right now, they still have this great fire pit. It's because it's open spaces. You can get a tour of their uh, their processing, the vat making, and just they have games out there, and it's just delightful. You feel like you're going into, uh, again, a storybook of some sort. And then another really neat place that I enjoy, uh, when you mentioned the experimental gardens, I, then I suddenly went, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It is located out on 7, one of the most beautiful drives uh, out of here. And if you cut back over, you can stop over at our distillery, which always has something, something cooking. It's a dad and his wife and four daughters so they've always got these fun activities going on out there you're painting you're doing this you're doing that but they have picking on the porch live music every no weekend way. yes uh food trucks and then their tastings are actually you know cocktails but they have just graduated and are producing their whiskey because of course that has to take a couple of years to develop but they have lovely um peppered vodka and vodka and flavored rums and it's amazing amazing so i would probably we have to come back no. oh no no we can do that well we'll check i think Wednesday that's a good we thing we have over here yeah, exactly. yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, okay, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah, so, we do that. So we could go out, like, tomorrow to the distillery? Uh, we call them, and they would uh, they would be there for us. They're always distilling. So if we wanted to go out there, yes. And they're just, again, an entrepreneur story of a man wanting cool. to leave behind something for his, his family. And so Ooh. they're kind of running it. Yeah, it's amazing. It sounds like a little moonshiner out there in the back. Oh, they have that... Yeah, they got that too. <laughs> oh, that's it. I want to go. Yeah, I want to go. And it's also right across the me. street from her. Yeah, really cool, really cool antique mall. It's amazing. Right across the really? street. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of antique shops here. So is that a big draw for people to come here is for the antiquing? Uh, we want to do more of that, truly, from a tourism, because antiquing is big business in this state, and we would love to do that, especially with what we have available. And part of that sale of the trail for us is about the antiquing. Mm. It's more about putting, uh, getting the folks downtown to experience the downtown shops and then kind of loop around to these mm. places that I just mentioned that are on uh, 59, not quite 21, oh. but still amazing. Mm. Good oh. stuff. Everyone, again, uh, go to visit org. It's NACO, N-A-C-O-D. Wait, wait, wait. Go to reverse. <laughs> visit N-A-C-O-G-D-O-C-H-E-S, org, And also go to com and check out this wonderful destination. And this is like a destination resort. You could just, you could park your car and never, you know, exactly. have to go <laughs> But obviously there's a lot more to see and do. But like if you, I think you could come here and probably spend like a full weekend and have your car parked in the parking lot here. And not That's be true. done. Absolutely. Yeah. That's our goal. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. That is our I goal. And you've got restaurants right on site, and that's what we're doing. All right. Well, thank you both for joining us. Thank you so much for having us in your town. We promise to behave. Not really. Uh, <laughs> so just There's a pool outside. There's, you know, restaurants with bars and, you know, winery downtown. I know what we're doing on Wednesday night. It's wine Wednesday. You know, so, you know, we know what we're doing tonight, too. So uh, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Visit Nagadochas.org, Fredonia.com. Keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. Our next show is Wednesday uh, with journalist and author Cheryl Stitzel McCarthy who talks about her newly released memoir, Many Hands Make Light Work. Isn't that true? Uh, so keep mm, up with us mm. again, BigBlendRadio.com. Our Love Your Park Tour adventures, go to LoveYourParkTour.com for that. Uh, we're going to be blogging. Well, Priscilla, our pink sock monkey, who Joanna met, will be blogging about our experience, you know, because she, she is very diligent about what she does. Uh, she also likes wine. So yes, good luck on that. That's what she's doing right now. But here it is. Mm. We're going to close with a song from our friend Shelly King. Shelly King comes on our shows every – Pretty much every year, uh, she is a, the first woman state musician of Texas, and this is a yeah. song called Texas Blue Moon. She's based in Austin. Uh, sorry, but, you know, that, that, I, 
I'm stretching over there. I'm leaning over to Dawson, but uh, because she is, she she rocks. Shelly King is one of the best. Uh, you can go to her website, ShellyKing.com, and this is from her latest album called Fan Faith. It's called Texas Blue Moon. So enjoy, and that's exactly what I would like to do. I'd like to go float in the pool outside. Mm -hmm. And look at a blue moon. Sounds like a good thing to me. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.